Better get saved. That's what we're back again. But I'm going to deal with a subject today, compassion. The missing component. Compassion. We can have sympathy for people. And we can even empathize with people. Feel their pain. Because we've been in those shoes. We have a closer feeling of what it's like to put mama's gone on. If you never lost your mama, never lost your daddy, you may sympathize with somebody, but once you've lost those close relatives, that child, then you empathize. Yeah, when you, you've seen, you've been a caretaker for years and years, and uh, you've had to give up your life and spread yourself over the uh, ill health of a loved one. Until you walk in those shoes, you don't empathize, you just sympathize. So today what I'm going to talk about, because one time Jesus fed 5,000 and another time he fed over 4,000. If you read the scripture, he did not feed them because they were hungry. The Bible said they had been with him three days. And if he, he said if I was to send them away uh, fasting without having something to eat, he said they'd faint and not make it home. So he said because many have come from afar. So he didn't feed them just because they were hungry, because on the first day, how many of you know after about a few hours, somebody you're hungry right now, you have a bowl of cereal at home. <laughs> and they were with him a full day and all that night, the next day they had a service. Well, they were hungry the next day and all of that night, then the next day, that third day, on that third day that he had another meeting, a three-day conference, if you would, and then he sent, he was going to send them home. The disciples were the one because the disciples said, we are hungry. Send them away, Master, but be home. And that sound like church folk. <laughs> but Jesus said, if I send them away fasting without anything to eat, they'll faint and won't make it to the house. If they had been just across the street or around the corner or up the block, he would have sent them home and let them get their food. But he said they lived it too far away. They had come. They've been with us three days. How many know they took up three offerings? <laughs> Y'all not in here with me. I'm going to get away from that. I'm not quitting this one. <laughs> compassion is the missing component. It was the Bible said he had compassion on, upon them. That's why he fed them. But let's look at Luke 7 and 11 through the 16 as our scriptural foundation for this morning. And I want you, I'm going to analyze this one because this, this, these 11 through the 16 are just full of a lot of good meat. Luke 7 and 11, and it reads. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bride, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Stop. Here is Jesus and his disciples. Again, we just read it. There were many with him. The 11th verse said that. He came into the city called Nain. Many of his disciples went with him, and what? Much people. Get this picture in your head. Here's a crowd of people with Jesus coming into a city. Here's a crowd of people with the widow coming out of the city. Watch the picture. For the Bible says that they were nigh in the 12th verse, or that means near the gate. Of the city. Somebody said the gate of the city. Yes. Now, the reason that's important, this city had no walls. <laughs> the gates were there for ornamentation, aesthetics. The gates were there just for decoration. I'm going to talk about this city. The city is named. Look at the bottom. I gave you what name means. Somebody said beautiful. Beautiful. This city was a beautiful city. That means that it was stunning and impressive and it 
would catch your eye when you came to this city. Something like San Francisco. It's a beautiful city. But this city of Maine, uh, 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 it's also, it gives the idea of it's pleasant. In other words, it's lovely and it's enjoyable. It's charming and delightful. And Jesus' disciples have walked from one place and now they're walking into this place and the beauty of the city has gotten their attention and it has gates, but the, the gates are not used to lock and close. They're just the decoration of this beautiful city because this city has no walls. So if I have gates at my city but have no walls, I can walk around the gate and open the doors. So then we get the impression now there's two dynamics happening. We have one crowd coming in with Jesus that's happy and enjoying the charming, delightful, eye-catching, impressive city of man. But you have another group that's buried the only son of a widow. I'm going to stay right there. God. See, I wish everybody felt that like I felt that. What is a widow? A widow is a, person, a woman who has lost her husband. And, and in that day, there was no Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security and life insurance. Y'all better stand here with me. And when a widow in that day, if they didn't have a son, if they didn't have nephews, and if they didn't have a male fi figure, which the Bible called a kinsman redeemer, I'm going to preach this to you. They would be out on their own. So now, uh, uh, she is now... Uh, are facing uh, uh, hard times because the husband's already dead. And now the only son. Now, now look, look how it phrases that. Look, look what the word says. It, the Bible says in the 12th verse, the Bible said, the only son of his mother. That lets you know that he's biological. This is not her husband's son. She, she, she's really feeling this because she gave birth to this child. Sometimes their parents are not as loving and kind to them. Sometimes even parents that have not children, sometimes they don't treat them like they really ought to, especially when that child act up. But a child that you brought into this life, he can act the biggest fool in the city. You'll go better than all and you'll, y'all not in here with me. You'll cry over it, although you're talking about, I'm not going to ever pay your fine, and I'm, I'm not going to ever go borrowing the money to take care of your legal bills and so here she is. She is burying her only son. Don't you know she's grieving? She's hurting. The reason we know that, the Bible says uh, in the 13th verse, the Lord saw her and had compassion. Let's look at this word, compassion. Compassion is sympathy, but it's also empathy. Sympathy deals with, first of all, you understand and you know because you've been there. But empathy, you really feel it. You, 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 when you hear about somebody's similar situation, it really touches you because you've been there and you know all about it because you sympathize, but the empathy part causes you to feel that hurt and feel that pain. Empathy also means that you become concerned and considerate. You'll also be thoughtful. In other words, it'll stay on your mind and it'll bark you to the point, it'll get your attention that you'll have to do something. Compassion is not just sitting back feeling sorry for somebody and feeling their pain. You are moved to do something to help. I'll say that again because a lot of times we see people that's in trouble and hurting and we're not moved with compassion. We, 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 we say, oh, what a sad story. Oh, I, I hate that the father uh, paid his son to kill the stepmother and oh, that's just really tragic. And, but we don't see is there anything that we can do for somebody going to go home and forget to pray for that family today. But compassion will make you keep them in your mind and keep your attention. And when you go home, you'll keep thinking about a pastor that had his wife killed and set fire to his church. And his, his, uh, his uh, father-in-law was a pastor. And that pastor let this rapist. Y'all, I want to go back to the story. But you understand what I'm saying? Compassion will make you keep something in your mind. 